Who's ready to laugh? Who's ready to have a good time? Then get it on with Eddie Pepitone and Apocalypse soon. Welcome to Apocalypse Soon Live. And now join us for a moment of mind relaxation. Another episode of Guided Meditation with Eddie Pemberton. Okay, everybody. I hope you're all in light fitting clothing. I hope you're all very aware of your breath, especially.
I am not kidding. The United States, the inequality now. Well, you see it on your streets. I see it in my apartment. But I want you to breathe that out. The best we can do is, at this point in our lives, is to watch the bear. That's the best thing. I started watching the bear because every idiot I know said, you have to watch the bear. You ever have that? Like people just go, what do you mean you haven't watched the bear? And I'm like, no, I haven't watched it yet. And they're like, fucking watch it. So I watched it and it made me very anxious. If you've seen it, you'll know what I mean. And also, I waited tape. Anyway, just breathe out. Breathe out all the atrocities, climate breakdown, mass shootings, the fact that we are probably, I would say, close to the last generation. Young people who are being brought into the world right now five to ten years they will have and people are still having children as if everything is cool if you know someone if you know someone who's having a kid just pretend it's okay and tell them congratulations Those kids will be learning how to gather documents in under 30 seconds. And now with your final in-breath, I want you to breathe in the fact that despite all these hardships, despite all the sorrow, particularly the slaughter and extinction of innocent animals. I myself don't mind human beings being extinct. I think that's a good thing. But to watch the animals die needlessly is horrific to me. And yet my significant other keeps sending me animal videos whenever I travel. I weep in hotel rooms watching interspecies friendships like a turtle playing with a giraffe or whatever the fuck. And now just let God you know there is no God but let God I love atheists. You know why? Because they have nothing to offer me. Basically, their message is, you will die alone, ill. And yet they wear their atheism like a badge. They say there is no God, and I say, tell me something I don't know. And now, let's get started with the numbers. Thanks for joining us on another episode of Guided Meditation with Eddie Pepito. Thank you for the applause. Yeah! All right! We're out of that bit! We're out of that bit. <laughs> you had a politeness about you that was like, no, it's not time to clap yet. I'm not sure if the bit is over. And, and that's a beautiful thing about hip audiences. And this is a hip audience. Uh, I have performed in front of audiences that are not hip. And it is torture. It is torture. 
my sidekick and producer, Jack of all trades, Kevin Tankin. Hey, yeah. Folks. Appreciate that. Feels good. Yeah, man. How's it going? I, I just want to talk briefly because as I get older, I like to talk about weather mm. and parking. And I'll tell you, it's a great time to talk about weather because it's gone crazy. You know what I mean? Like it used to be, ah, I don't know, you know. Weather talk used to be like, ah, oh, geez, it's going to rain tomorrow. Now it's like, we're going to die tomorrow. <laughs> you guys see the floods in Vermont, like out of nowhere, these fucking bucolic little towns are underwater. That's our future. That, that's like Vermont is just another place where it just randomly happens. You know, where are you located? Wait, did you say bucolic? Yes. That's impressive. Well, I, I, you know, that's a big I, one. I was raised near Harvard. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Oh, wow, that makes sense. I was raised near near Harvard. Oh, you said parking, and I could not take my mind off the 45 minutes that I drove around outside, and then I started right. to rage the, uh, Round of applause if you had trouble parking. <clears throat> Not, it sounds like not many. Not everybody, no, no. Well, like, I, I did this. I went into this parking garage here, which was a fucking shit show. And <laughs> let me tell you, yes, we have problems in this country. Mass shootings, you know, people, uh, children starving, uh, you know, underemployment, unemployment. But there's nothing worse than being stuck in a parking garage where it has, you know, a mass shooting it would be welcomed. Be <laughs> really, because I couldn't even go up the up ramp. There were so many cars. It was just, and so what I did, and this is me, I just snuck into the first level and parked in a handicap spot. Yeah. <laughs> we got somebody on our side. It's a risk I'm willing to take. I'm thinking that Parking enforcement is not coming into that place. I fucking think it out. I'm like, God damn it. God damn it, Eddie. This was a great spot to get. You would have been stuck in that fucking parking garage for an hour. <laughs> Which I would have been. You couldn't anyway. I parked it in there and I go, if it does get towed, though, I'll be disconsolate. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, 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 I will be like, like Van Gogh toward the end of his life. I don't know if you followed. Van Gogh did not have a good end. <laughs> you know what I mean? By the way, I do laugh at things I say. And uh, it's arrogant. <laughs> so what's, uh, so parking was a pain in the ass. Um, L.A. now is the epicenter of, and we're going to bring out our first guest very yeah, yeah, shortly. Yeah. I hope if he hears his name now, he doesn't come running out because this isn't the introduction. But we're going to bring out James Adomian, and we're really going to get it. <laughs> <laughs> Did he, like, peek his head out? He's very good with comedic timing. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how you should say comedic. Comedic. All right. So, yeah, a little laugh, and that's great. Oh, yeah. Um, so, L.A., and this is wild to me. How many people out there are in the entertainment industry? Round of applause. <laughs> that's funny to me. And, and first of all, congratulations that you're not. Um, but L.A. has become the epicenter now of the labor uprising in this country. Yeah. yeah, and it's kind of exciting. It's kind of exciting. Uh, are, did you get excited? Like, did uh, you run out to, like, a, a wholesale place and get a suit? Yeah, no, I protested in front of my apartment. You uh, what? I, my car's been giving me issues, so I just protested in front of my apartment. Your car's been giving you issues? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold it. He buried the lead. <laughs> The old Prius C, it's, uh, it's about to die. It's on 190,000 miles. That, it's not doing that, great. You know, people drive their cars now until they go on fire. 
That's what I'm hoping for. I hate having a car payment. It's fully paid off, so I'm. It's I'm fully in a, paid oh, off. Oh, I'm in dreamland, right, baby. You're, you're dropping bragging things. Oh now. yeah, it's big time. It's and it gets fifty miles of the gallon. Not to rub it in your face. Is that or good? Anything. I have no oh, idea. Oh, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. I have no idea. I, I drive a 2006 Honda Element, and uh, it's my baby. It's a pussy mobile. <laughs> <laughs> there are cheap ways to get a laugh in this business, and uh, I teach a night course. <laughs> really late at night. Oh, yeah. Really late at night. Well, they night. won't let you teach during the day. Yeah. I mean, Not technically, it is the day. It's like 3 a.m. Yeah, yeah. near LAX. Yeah. Where uh, uh, Pacino shot De Niro in heat. Anyway, <laughs> and if, if you've seen that movie... I recently watched it to relax. I watch movies to relax. And all I get is violence. I cannot believe that Hollywood, well, they're not churning out anything currently, but that Hollywood still churns out nothing but mostly violence, you know? And, and then you could watch an independent film about a postman who has cancer in Chile which is what I like to do. Right. Oh, you love uh, Postman with Cancer movies. That's always been a big... Yeah. A big draw I like you. seeing delivery guys who yeah. have illness. <laughs> <laughs> you know, speaking of delivery guys with an illness, we have one in the back. He's here. Should we introduce our, our first guest? Okay. <laughs> I, that was a weird I, segue, but... He's, pa he's pacing. I can see him pacing. It's okay, well, hey, ladies and gentlemen, one of the... One of the uh, this guy is... He's he's underrated. He's getting his due now. <laughs> he is. He is. He's he's working more and more, which is fucking great. It took me. I tell kids who get into show business, don't worry. By sixty, you might be making a living. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but please welcome, really one of the best comedians, James Adomi, and everybody. Hi. Thank you, Eddie. What a hot introduction. Well, he's <laughs> underrated, he but he's finally getting his due. You don't know about him, but your children might if they study the history of comedy in 30 years. I did fuck that up, but... No, Eddie, you look great. Eddie looks great. I've known you for 20 years, and this is the youngest you've looked. You know, that is true, and there's a Bob Dylan song. I don't know if people know this, but it's called... I was so much older than I'm younger, younger than, than that now. now. Uh, and that's what's going on with me. I get, I get younger because I was so devastated emotionally you, you as were a child. A traumatized Benjamin I? Button. <laughs> why am I laughing? You see, that's why I, I, I started a podcast called Apocalypse Soon. And I thought the tagline was great, the podcast with no upside, right? And I try to deal... It's your, it's, look, the people pour in. That's right. <laughs> Why do you point that out? Because they know you, you know, you're like, they don't know at home? <laughs> That's your angle? No. So <laughs> you, or you, you layer, lost me. You, you lost layer me. in the laughter and, and hiccups from a larger audience. <laughs> You you pull in the this room sound. Fine. The, you pull in the room sound of a Kyle Kinane podcast taping. <laughs> Does he get big? Fuck big crowds. Layer. I'll, 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 I'll let you know about my editor guy. He can <laughs> he can make, no, make things sound like it's a Marin special. <laughs> I don't want artifice. You know, I don't want sweeteners. We agree. To, we'd yeah. agree, except aspartame. Um, <laughs> That's, again, if you take my night course, I will show you how to fit stuff like that in. Beautifully done. What was this night, night course again? I just teach people how to, you know, earn a living by 60 years old. <laughs> Good. Yeah, I should enroll. You know? Um, 2 a.m. at the college. Yeah, 2 a.m. where Pacino... By LAX. Where Pacino shot, shot De Niro in heat. Do you remember that little, like, square, like, cement thing? I think this is actually just you at the 
uh, airport Century Boulevard Marriott in the lobby in like the they have, it's like the the Singapore room that's like a banquet hall and it's just you and another thing <laughs> when you move from New York they always tell you to get a manager the manager doesn't do anything <laughs> Oh my God, that's so true, you know? Um, and they're like, sir, can I see your Bonvoy card? <laughs> I'm a Bonvoy member. <laughs> Marriott Bonvoy. Are you, you sound like you know the Marriott system. That's right, the fucking, I swipe into the Marriott. I get points back. I get points back. Bangladesh is underwater, but I get points back on my Bonvoy account. That's what we've come to, folks. Different parts of the world are underwater. The parts of the world that, by the way, had nothing to do with the climate warming. You know, they're just the recipients of the industrialized world's uh, uh, stuff. You know, stuff is the best word I could come up with there. And uh, you have a Bonvoy card, and you're like, fuck it, fuck it. As long as you swipe in, and then you get into the hotel, and there's a screen showing you how good the hotel is with propaganda. I love that they have <laughs> hotel propaganda in the hotel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're in a good place now. Yeah. I like on the elevator in a hotel how they just tell you, you know, Relax. It's like a guided meditation. Relax on floor three. We have steak tartare, and the fitness room has one treadmill. <laughs> you should be fine. On uh, the roof, on the roof, there's a pool that's full of people who are not staying at the hotel, who pay a separate fee to hang out at the pool. I stay at the Cecil Hotel. <laughs> That's where I stay, where the Night Stalker stays. Right. Right. Did you see that fucking documentary on the Cecil Hotel? The most, dis you never did, right? I could tell by your distant fucking stare. How about, he blew it off, he blew it off. He blew it off, he you? didn't know, he couldn't contribute to the bit. Eddie. How about you, do you know the Cecil? Eddie, great riff, Yes, I great did. riff, Eddie. It got a big laugh. It, it got a big laugh as it fell apart. Uh, Look, that, that's the tagline of this podcast Biggs laughs as it falls apart <laughs> Eddie, do you have an injury of your finger Or is that a, oh. uh, is that a blood oxygen level measure? <laughs> <laughs> it does look like one of them uh, Yeah. It's also, you were flipping someone off It's on his middle finger, everybody Yeah, this, this is a warning to people Who give the bird to a lot of people <laughs> I when you see a guy who has scars on his face, you're like, oh, that guy fights. You're like, I flip people off a lot. Watch out. <laughs> I flipped one too many person off, and I tore a tendon. <laughs> it's always in the car. It's always in the car. Like, I just do that. You I know? bumped it against the, the, the laundry hook on the edge of the window. <laughs> Flipping off a guy. <laughs> the laundry hook. That's in the back seat, asshole. That, well, it was a dynamic flip. <laughs> I, I don't think you liked that I called you on, you know, where things are located in a car. <laughs> I, but I think I, I think I rescued it, at least back to a, 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 a point of zero. We were at a deficit, and now we're back up to zero. By the way, the lulls up here... Are planned. And you don't mean L U L Z like in the internet <laughs> message board speak. <laughs> this is not the lulls. This is the lulls as in troughs. <laughs> Long pauses. <laughs> oh man, I, I love comedians like yourself, like Kevin. We all have such incredibly low self esteem. Oh yeah. Yet we present ourselves in front of audience as, as authorities. And uh, I just wanted to say that. <laughs> um, Folks, Eddie Pepitone is an industry professional right. for over 30 years. He's been in 450 television shows and 30 films. None of this deserves any respect from anyone. <laughs> I think the, the, tr the true story of how you hurt your finger is even better than... Oh, my God. All right, this is a true story. <laughs> I tore a tendon in this finger by pulling up my pants. <laughs> 
and that's how I roll. In Fresno. If you want to play with me, that's how it goes. They got this snagged, is... though. They got snagged on something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they did. They got snagged, and I really yanked it. And the next thing I knew, my finger was crooked, and I would touch my head, and it felt like there were lumps. Oh. Eckhart Tolle says, <laughs> when you start pulling your life together, there will be little things that go wrong. <laughs> Where the fuck did that come from? Um, all right, now, I want to talk about something, and... Uh, round of applause, because I'll play it for you if you didn't hear it. But did you guys, you know, the actors just went on strike and... Strike! 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 Great. <laughs> You're I like the solidarity. <laughs> and did you guys hear Ron Perlman on Twitter? Yeah. Yeah. It was the best, like, he's talking to, I think everybody thought it was Bob Iger, who is the CEO of Disney, who's got a yacht that is so big. I'm trying to think how big it is. It's like the size of my cock. <laughs> <laughs> Kidding. Again, that's night school stuff. Right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> By the way, Ron Perlman, it looks terrifying. He looks like a, he looks like a Muppet from The Muppet Show. But not one of the smaller hand-operated Muppets, but the larger one that pops out yes. for a big punchline and goes, "Okay, Kermit." <laughs> yes. Now check this out. It's so good. Welcome to Great. Instagram, the podcast. We said we're going to keep this thing going until people start losing their houses and their apartments. Listen to me, motherfucker. There's a lot of ways to lose your house. Some of it is financial, some of it is karma, and some of it is just figuring out who the fuck said that, and we know who said that, and where he fucking lives. There's a lot of ways to lose your house. You wish that on people. You wish that families starve while you're making 27 fucking million dollars a year for creating nothing. Be careful, motherfucker. Be really careful. Because that's the kind of shit that stirs shit up. See, did you guys see that? Fuck yeah. yeah. That's the way to talk to these fucking people. That's the way you talk to them. You know? And what's amazing to me is that that's pretty much an A-list actor. And I was wondering, and we're going to use a Domi and Zacumen now, what it would be like if different A-listers came out threatening. I don't do impressions of A-listers because other people have claimed them by the time I come along. You're going to have to bust this down to, like, B-list. Whatever, whatever. Don't fuck up the premise of the bit. Um, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's not the late night school. That's uh, after late night school. Yeah, you, you, you're struggling a little. Um... <laughs> I'm winning Eddie. tonight. Eddie. I'm winning. This guy, he's great, but he comes after me a lot. <laughs> but tonight, it goes my way. Eddie, I like... He's going to be stewing at home in his little fucking apartment with his fucking sailboat boxer shorts on. Like... How do you know this? <laughs> Vote. Smoking a... Smoking fucking a pre-rolled... <laughs> CBD cigarettes. Eddie, Eddie looks great. I like the longer hair and the beard. You look like a Civil War general that President Lincoln fired for, for losing a major battle. That was an old joke, and he's trying to come back on me now with tested material. I'm just riffing up here. It gets dirty. It gets dirty up here. But anyway... As, as the same thing that uh, General Burnside said, and it didn't help him. Burnside, yeah. Uh, I forget. Anyway, McClellan in the Civil War was a pussy. Yeah, I, lo I, I would. <laughs> That's love the only thing I know about the Civil <laughs> War. That's why I would love to play the part of George B. McClellan. It's impossible. We can't do it. We have to re retreat. Retreat. We outnumber them ten to one. We've got to get out of here. <laughs> if you know the Civil War, which you probably you don't. would have laughed. <laughs> yeah. Loved it. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so what I think, should I, here's the premise, and you, you could chime in too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because I like you. Um, <laughs> you you're Is definitely it, a funny guy. Kevin Tinkin, you have to check out Kevin's stand-up and stuff. Uh, but This he, is my dad. <laughs> he, he's so proud of me. He was fucking raised in Central California, Fresno. Oh, yeah. I just recently came from Fresno. You want to talk hellhole? <laughs> it, it's just like people getting baked under the sun, picking things. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, it's, it's the kind of place where you can sprain your finger just by pulling your pants up. It's... That's the kind I of I did it in it Fresno. This yeah. happened in Fresno. That's a lesser known Frank Sinatra song. <laughs> I did it in Fresno, baby. All right. Fresno right underneath Yosemite. <laughs> By the that, way, it was hot. Our, our, our there was apples. <laughs> Let him go. Let him go. Oh, I'm done. That was good timing. Our, okay. Our, our, our uh, second guest is here. Oh, is he? He's here. He's also pacing all right. in well, the back. All right. Uh, let's bring out. Ready? This is this guy. I love this guy from moment one because he was young. I love the young. <laughs> <laughs> Groomer. <laughs> and he was hip politically, and he was funny. Please welcome Brandon Wardell, everybody. Yeah, baby. Yeah! Hi, right, James uh, Adobe, yes. nice to meet you. Wow, 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 wow. Well. Let's uh, bring it. thank you for like putting us in a demographic that <laughs> people will listen to. Oh boy. You know what I mean? I, you know I'm I'm 30 now. You're 30? I'm, uh, but you're I'm, yeah. so baby face. Are you at the are you at the lowest? I hit the I hit the wall. Youngest <laughs> in of millennials? <laughs> What's that? Are you the youngest millennial? I guess so. I guess. Beyond you. But I feel like they, they like expanded the the definition of millennial. Right, just anybody they don't like ago. at Time I also, Magazine. I, I feel like there's some like Gen X erasure where like people like the all the, the OK Boomer stuff, it's like I feel like they, they're at sometimes it's like you're talking Gen X. Right. And the Gen X is fine. They're like, I don't really need to be in the spotlight on this one. <laughs> right. No, exactly. Let these guys fight. Just, they, they want their MTV. I don't get any of that. I don't get any of what they were just talking about. Like, I just relate to people. Yeah. I, I don't go, oh, there's a Gen Xer. There's a fucking millennial. Yeah, you're a little bit older than a boomer. You're Take part of the... Take it fucking easy. You're part of the loud, <laughs> the loud generation, right? <laughs> the loud generation? The, the very well heard from generation. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. We didn't let me I was also I was also so annoyed that uh, who who made who said groomer before I got up here? Well that was Alex Jones. Fuck! <laughs> I had it in my back pocket. I was gonna come out here and be like, yeah, Eddie groomed me. <laughs> and then I don't think already... we said that. Did anyone say groomer? No. Yes, he can't even hear it. Adomi, Adomian <laughs> got it, got it, got the buzzer beater before I came out uh, here. There's satanic iconography all over Eddie Pepitone <laughs> stuff. Go back and look at the documents. You've seen it all the way since he was on the WTF podcast, <laughs> which is a satanic ritual that began at UCB. <laughs> He's been grooming these young, impressionable 30-year-old comedians. Yeah, I did it. <laughs> so what? That's how I would want to go down yeah. with it. Oh, you, 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 your path is always to play the guy in the Twilight Zone episode who's losing against the machine. <laughs> Maybe I am human. <laughs> go ahead and zap us all. <laughs> there should, Eddie. There should just be a black off Black Mirror spinoff show that's just you <laughs> in a room that's just a bunch of screens with Spotify on them. <laughs> Play a song! <laughs> oh, I've had arguments with Alexa for sure, you know. <laughs> Alexa, why can't I love? <laughs> they have nothing to say. They just give you the mental yeah. health number, right? Okay, Eddie. Brandon? That's true. I think I we're going in circles, Eddie. I mean, I, I do. I always feel weird about the, well, Alexa and Siri. It, it, is, it puts you in a position where, where you're yelling at a woman. Well. <laughs> in both cases. Very true. And good of you, yeah. good of you to acknowledge that in front yeah, of a yeah, very yeah. hip crowd. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. 
Ladies. <laughs> Ladies. And, and in my apartment, I was going to say house, but that's very... We know. <laughs> uh, recently, Alexa found out about Siri. Yeah. And it's a fucking cat fight. Oh, Lord. <laughs> like, I'll say, I'll say, Alexa, Alexa, what is the traffic to my favorite Maybe Starbucks? Maybe you should ask Siri. <laughs> yes. That was the punchline. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you should ask the bitch in the phone, Alexa says. <laughs> Look, as most of you know, I was raised at the docks. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right? This I, is my favorite bit. It's the, I'm riffing. <laughs> I'm down at the docks. My father was down at the docks. We don't know where the docks are. <laughs> anyway, that's an old bit. Um, uh, so what, Brandon, did you hear Ron Perlman's... I was there. I, was there. Uh, I, so I heard it prior to Oh, good. This so you, No, because well. you, yeah. to me, are one of the people who do have their finger on the pulse I mean, of this I city. Don't, I, don't know if, I don't know if that's the case. I, it, maybe it won't. I, I feel like... Once they once they railroaded Bernie, I got like very disengaged. Yes, just to protect. Yes. How do you think I, I feel? Brand. I just started. How do you eating. think I feel about it? <laughs> One minute you're talking to a bunch of young people; they all look like mannequins in a department store in Los Feliz, and then the next moment you're tied to the tracks of a brio train. <laughs> yeah, I, what was the what was the question? Right, I'm sorry. No, he hears Bernie and boom. No, no, no. Uh, I'm glad I said of James. We know he has a great Bernie. I'm glad. Mm-hmm. I'm glad I set him up. I think next one has got to be Robert Kennedy. <laughs> <laughs> oh and yeah. There's one thing is about the Kennedy family. We're known for being uh, very attractive and well spoken. <laughs> I just want to carry on the tradition. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm wrong about a lot of things, including the vaccines, but I am right that my uncle and father were killed by the CIA. <laughs> we know that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel like that voice of RFK Jr. is going to be a problem <laughs> like whistle stop tours. <laughs> I, and as a matter of fact, I don't think the fast trains even stop wait, these days. Wait, wait, ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. He sounds like someone who was almost killed by a space laser, <laughs> but has survived, and he's now a major character in the science fiction movie you're watching. We've got to stop the space lasers. <laughs> Also, here's something I found out. He hates the vaccines. I didn't. I, he, yeah, he's. What do you mean? You just found that? No, no, out. no. But also, uh, the back's the background. In the, he was like, in his, as a young man, after his father was murdered, and everybody was like, "We're not going to investigate this. We believe what the news says." He became a heroin addict. Of course, he did. He became a heroin addict, and he kicked it. So I think he just hates needles. Uh. <laughs> well, I'm not going to put another needle in me. <laughs> If he gets the vaccine, he'll be like, I'm home. Yeah. <laughs> Time to bang the gong around. Wait, James, did you watch the uh, the Rogan the Rogan interview? The Seth Rogan interview? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Seth, yeah, Seth Rogan. and Joe, uh, they blazed. They blazed one. Seth uh, Rogan. No, what a great voice you got. <laughs> the Joe Rogan... Uh, with RFK, uh, yeah. I saw some clips of it. I, I see, haven't seen it. I usually see Joe Rogan echoed around on the mm. internet. With uh, after I wake up uh, late in the day, so that everybody he's ha- already had their opinions in New York, right? And then I see, yeah. I see the echoes uh-huh. of that, yeah. and then like decide if I care about any of it. Yes, yes. By the way, you could get up at nine a.m. and see that. Oh no! It was I mean much later? Let's say put it that. I oh, wait. I'm just I wait saying in, nine a.m. is three hours. I wait until mm. Hawaii has had their set. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. And then and then I then I leave the bedchamber. Yeah. <laughs> I go. What is the what is the oi polloi I got about you. today? Now I, I just want to get to this bit because I thought of this bit before this show, 
and Re reason. Bra 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 <laughs> Brandon, you could chime in on this too. But so Ron yeah. Perlman, I just played it for the audience too, and you're aware of it because you're hip. Uh, I don't think that's like the barometer. <laughs> it was like a. It was a. You guys saw the clip. Ah, huh? no? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, so, anyway, 27 it was fucking just million a, dollars. <laughs> it was 27 just... fucking million dollars. <laughs> Karma. What ways you could lose your house? Karma, you could lose it. You could just lose it like you lose a pair of keys. <laughs> you could lose it like you could lose a couple of pounds. You could lose it like you could lose your sense of wonder when you're a young person. <laughs> a lot of ways to lose a house, pal. A lot of ways to lose house. Actually, in the Rolling Hill Estates area, they're losing houses because the houses are sinking. You can lose. <laughs> I loved. I'm sorry that that happened to some people, but I saw the local news with the Palos Verdes landslides, and they have. I didn't. Of course, there's a mayor of Rolling Hills Estates, but she looked like just a homeowners association woman. Anywhere else, she would just be in charge of some condos, but in Palos Verdes, she's like, I am the mayor of this. Uh, oh, technically, a city mayor out here in Los Angeles is not a big deal. Right. You know, it is done by, you could be, you know, <laughs> DoorDash person <laughs> and a mayor. You sure. know what I mean? Sure. And you still have to supplement your income with a third job. <laughs> I knew, I, I, uh, up until very recently, I knew the mayor of Glendale. I was, I was like, I'm old enough and important enough that I know a mayor. And then he and was it only, means shit. He was in office for like two years. And they got rid of him. Two years is nothing to sneeze at. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so the premise is not only Ron Perlman, a list actor, coming out, but let's say and fucking threatening the studio heads, which is the way it should be done, you know. Um, <laughs> I like Fran Drescher too, because she does stuff like. They're disgusting. <laughs> they are disgusting. They treat us with no respect. You know what I mean? She's like a lady from Queens. Yeah, yeah. Who yeah. made many millions on the nanny. I love watching her scream with her accent. Yeah. She's right. like a Judge Judy, but with correct uh, opinions about things. <laughs> oh, you well, don't like, think What Judge... if Judge Judy was not wrong about everything? <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> You just dropped a bomb. Wait, it's a, I don't. I've, I haven't really kept up with Judge Judy Jeez. outside of Judge Judy. <laughs> what, what, like her off-screen antics. <laughs> Judge, Lots well, I, <laughs> you can go to my website, uh, uh, JudgeJudyTruth.com. Wait, is it, can what? Are, what are she, Judge she, Judy's No, politics? I just, I, I just have a beef against her because she endorsed Michael Bloomberg, and she mm. was, she was like the only person that endorsed yeah. Michael what Bloomberg. What did you think she was? Yeah. Uh, fucking uh, a radical leftist. <laughs> I had some hopes. Yeah. Mm. I had some hopes. Yeah, I thought maybe she had an era in the past where she was a pinup model with like lasers and dinosaurs. <laughs> And then she I'll spent some you. time. She spent some time in, uh, you know, in North Vietnam. I, I had my hopes. Did she? <laughs> Wouldn't you love it? Uh, <laughs> anyway. Ho Chi Minh, shut up! <laughs> We're gonna start getting goods along this trail. Uh, I think it would be funny if she had the power to like sentence people to death. <laughs> <laughs> For your appeal mm. is not granted. I sent it to the electric chair. Yeah, yeah. Look, you never paid her for the dresser. <laughs> and you are going to die. <laughs> that you show, know what I mean? The, that show is mostly like roommate squabbles, no? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Shut up. Roommate squabble, $200, sir. Your children will know that you died because of that $200. <laughs> Strap him in. <laughs> and they get the bailiff on camera to shoot whoever it is. <laughs> yeah. He's usually kind of overweight and out of it. Yeah. He's on a lot of like Klonopin, Zolop. <laughs> I would no, love Judge, that guy. Judge Judy should be like, it should be like Live Leak. Where you're just like, have you, you, you've been on Live Leak? <laughs> of, course, of course he <laughs> has. <laughs> this is Eddie Pepitone. You've been on Live, live Leak. I've been on, the only Live, live leak, leak I know, you know is what happens in the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> I don't... <laughs> What's it called? Live week? Li live leak. This is like no. This isn't oh. like a new internet thing. This is just like I don't know what it is. There's what like it? you can see. I'm pretty sure you can see people get it's murked like, on there. Yeah, it's like what camera footage? Yeah, from, uh, from like Russian, Russian like dash cam footage of what? 
Lively like the violence. Or oh, no, at I, best, yeah. Eddie, an asteroid. At best. That's yeah, the mild, best thing you're going to Like mild, mild snuff. Yeah, I am not into <laughs> like, like Before you came. Snuffette? I, yeah. <laughs> before you came, I was talking about how Hollywood is still churning out violence. Yeah. And the fact that people go to websites to watch violence right. is, is just fucking beyond me. I mean, I love hockey fights, though, <laughs> which is violent, but it's, yeah. it's like within the context of a game, so it has a purpose. Uh. <laughs> but, uh. but here's the premise, Brennan. So Ron Perlman, he's, he's almost an A-list or is he a B-list? I, I don't know. You keep saying Ron Perlman's an A-lister, which is I he not? No, respect. Not. I respect Ron Perlman. <laughs> A lot. Another. No, but I just, I don't, is that like the, no, good I don't for know. you for respect. Hell, he's the titular Hellboy. That's great. But he's like, he's, I mean, he's, I, look, I, Did I love, I love. he's the titular Hellboy? Yes, he's the titular Hellboy. I think Hellboy. that was unnecessary. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think he's a list, not a list. Yeah. yeah. He's doing better than any of us. That's true. Oh, that yeah. is not a barometer, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> That is not. We are the people who pick at Hollywood. Yeah, you know, comedian. We pick mm-hmm. at it like yeah. you scum. Yeah. And then when they hire mm-hmm. us for a big thing, we're like, thank you. <laughs> right. A couple yeah. of these Ron Perlman's <laughs> of wisdom from Eddie Pepitone. Thank you. <laughs> Terrific. Um, all right. So here's the premise. Let's have uh, James. You can start it. Brandon, if you think of stuff. Mm. Uh, and Kevin, I like you. Um, <laughs> I like what you do. Uh, so how about Paul Giamatti threatening Bob Iger? Ooh. Gonna, wait, yeah, hold, no, hold on a second. Hold on a second. To the, I mean, I, to the, there's a guy. You're really telling people they have to lose their <laughs> fucking houses? You're telling people they have to lose their fucking houses? Their apartments and everything? I mean, Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> you make $27 million a year. What am I? A fucking jail? I already live on a couch. <laughs> I already live on a fucking couch. I jerked off in a coffin, and I live on a fucking couch. Eeyaw! Eeyaw, for fuck's sake! Pin the tail on the fucking junk donkey face. Mr. G. Monty, I just wanted to ask you, how much money did you make to embarrass yourself? They charged me. They charged me for every project I've done. (laughs) SAG AFTRA has managed to calibrate my dues so that they out, they are higher than whatever I get paid for any project. I, mean. I walk around Sunset Boulevard with a sandwich board that says, "Kick me in the fucking face." Why did are you, you fucking happy now? Why did you do? Why did you do the T-Mobile spot? I needed the fucking money, okay? I need the fucking money. I've got a dominatrix, and I. I got a dominatrix and she's pimped me out to two other dominatrixes. SAG after takes all the money that I make from everything. They're not paying us enough. They were not making enough any fucking way. Okay, that's great. Um, I have a passion project I'm trying to get off the ground. It's it's a, it's a, it's, it's a biopic of Sisyphus. But every time I almost get it bought, it, it just rolls right back down the development <laughs> Oh, that's, I love Greek mythology jokes. Um, all right, so that's Paul Giamatti threatening, you know, the studio heads. How about an old timey actor threatening? Studio? Why, sure, yeah, of course. Why not, honey? <laughs> Listen, Angel, I understand you've been going around saying some awfully scary things about people losing their apartments, all over a little uh, labor dispute. That's right saying that maybe people don't deserve to live in a house. After all, you came all this way, walk stepping over the bodies of people without homes, and then you get into your nice little office and you say, we need more of this. Is that right? Is that, does that roughly track to the script? Look me in the eyes, you lousy worm. Slap, slap. You make $27 million of dollars, so dollars a year, see? Sitting in that Burbank office with those mouse ears. You're going to make sure everyone has a living wage here. There's lots of ways that guys can lose a house. <laughs> It's got, he's got that film noir yeah, style yeah. down. How about Orson Welles uh, threatening? Well, you know, it's, it's, <clears throat> what, what, what is the issue here? The issue is, how do we know it's Bob Iger? Who is this Iger? <laughs> in, in, uh, 
the word is that he's making twenty seven million dollars a year. I can't get even I can't get funding for me to get back to Paris to get my unfilmable film role back to back to Venice where I have an unfilmable script to re- record voiceover for. Twenty seven million dollars. And now he has the audacity to say that people should lose their houses. Well, as someone who's lost a number of houses, let me tell you, it's <laughs> it's easier to lose a house than it is to get one. And what we need in the showbiz, it's a tough business as it is, and if you've proved it, and I mean proved it, not in a way that a corporate executive can pretend he's proven something, but I mean really proved it out there on the, on the stage or the screen in front of an audience. If you've proven it, I think the least we can give you, old man, is some place to live. <laughs> oh, I love Orson Welles. I love your Orson Welles. Um, I, can you do one like a? a, a I don't. A, <laughs> well, you ask it, no, you like have like an impressionist do yeah, a series of I'm impressions. I'm trying to spread it around. I know I'm not. A, I'm not an impressionist. Yeah, but you know. could do an approximation. <laughs> <laughs> you got somebody from history, so there's nothing to hold. Oh, yeah, yeah, there we go. For, oh, I should say this on the no. podcast microphone. Mm-hmm. Yeah, wait, is this being, are, is this on wax? <laughs> 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 is, I don't is this know what just for, hip. Is this very just hip. for them tonight, or is this on, no, this, this is, is on the podcast? No, it's, it's going on wax. It's like, on the computer. I like, we're on the computer. Uh, right I now. like that as a new slang term for, like, you didn't know you are being recorded, like, <laughs> oh, shit, is this on wax? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't know this was on wax. <laughs> hey, kid, I, could you strike everything? Um, I, yeah, I hate to interrupt, but it is the time that we usually check in with the couple living inside of your head. Oh, okay. Ooh. I'm gonna get the focus for a little bit. Great. Is that um? Our- <laughs> <laughs> what? Yes. Yes. There's your beautiful pixelated All right. face. P- fans of the podcast will know this segment. I. We, we, you'll see, and then we'll go back to different big actors or actresses threatening studio heads. Think of something good, Brandon. So is, is this? Is this? Yeah. The- <laughs> Why not Carson Daly threatening? Yeah. yeah. It's Carson Daly's what? what? Car- it doesn't exactly. matter. Exactly. Somebody People like you like can a, do it. Okay. Right, someone right, like right. you. Thank you. Thank you. If thank I you. were okay, you, yeah. I would do something like this. Pick someone who's wildly overrated, and no one will say it. Paul Dano. Whoa, whoa, oh, Jesus whoa, Christ, whoa. Jesus Christ, the Dano heads. <laughs> <laughs> Dano heads. All right, let's. All right. And now, checking in with Alan Margaret, the couple living inside Eddie Pepitone's head. <laughs> Al, Al, where did you put the pancake batter? Margaret. Please, I'm tired. I was out all day digging graves. <laughs> what? I was digging graves, Margaret. You know that that is my night job. Wait a minute. When you said you were going to get supplemental work, I thought it was going to be something respectable. <laughs> Margaret, people need their graves dug. I mean, unless you're brought out to the Vegas desert by mobsters, <laughs> then you dig your own grave. Al, don't start quoting Scorsese movies to me, okay? I don't want to think about fucking casino at this time of day. What time of day is it? I don't know. Whatever time of day it is in Eddie Pepitone's head. Look, Margaret, are you going to start that meta shit again? (laughs) That we're just two disembodied voices inside a comic's head? Look, Al, I know you get nervous and you have some kind of panic attack when I point out that we're not real. But the fact is, we're not. Oh, really? Come here and kiss me, you little minx. (laughs) Al, I love when you talk to me like that. I know you do. And if you were just a disembodied (laughs) voice in Eddie Pepitone's head, you couldn't get wet. (laughs) Al, that was rude. I don't like that side of you. 
where you call my lust for you wet. I'm not wet. Not in this arid climate. <laughs> Look, Margaret, don't start with the climate breakdown shit again, okay? Look, Al, can we call this what it is? Eddie Pepitone is crazy. And we're just two of the many voices in his head. <laughs> I mean, many voices. Look, Margaret, we could talk about this <laughs> crap. Who the fuck is that? <laughs> Who else is here? Ah, <laughs> uh, he's doing a live podcast. You know, you don't have to dig graves to impress me, you big lug. I loved you when you were just a ball of shit. <laughs> what the hell are you talking about, Margaret? When you were just a little ball of shit. What do you mean? Well, you were a little ball of shit. <laughs> hey, look, Margaret, that isn't going anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> you tried to come up with something. I didn't try to come. Look, Al, I just want you to know I made macaroni and cheese and cod. <laughs> cod? Who the fuck makes cod? Maybe Dover Soul. Oh, well, just because you watch The Bear. <laughs> <laughs> they don't make Dover Soul on The Bear, Margaret. They make fucking meat sandwiches, and there's a lot of blood, and occasionally they cry. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you looking at the guests, Sal? <laughs> I don't know. I want some reassurance. <laughs> Well, I, all I want you to know is I love you, if, even if you're not real. I just adore you. Well, thank you, Margaret, because my car doesn't work. <laughs> Do we really need one? Hmm. You're a crazy knucklehead, you know that? Hold me. And thanks for joining us on another Checking In with Al and Margaret, the couple living inside Eddie Pepitone's head. Yeah, go ahead, James. I love that those two lifelong partners, they've been together for decades. And oh, yeah. they still, every time one of the other one talks, have to name the other one. <laughs> I never realized that. <laughs> I never realized it that. It really makes sure that they understand that the other one knows their name. <laughs> like they're trying to do a neurolinguistic programming and <laughs> trying to help remember th their life partner's name. That's a good fucking point. And don't think I won't integrate that. <laughs> <laughs> It's a future fucking podcast. All right, now I'm waiting for uh, Brandon to do a Carson Daly. Uh, threatens a big studio head. Do what you can. Wait, Carson Daly? Wait. Do you not what know him? No, I'm familiar. I watched, I watched Total Request We're waxing live. this, by the way. Right. Yeah. Oh, jeez. Fuck. Yeah. Wait. Where do, you, where do you start with? Okay, Carson Daly. Uh, well, I don't know. Don't need... overthink it. Just have fun. Yeah. yeah. That's what I've been told my whole life. Oh, yeah. My coaches and managers and agents just have fun in front of the television cameras. All right. <laughs> hey, hey, it's me. Hey, it's me, Carson Daly. <laughs> well, welcome to MTV's Total Request Live. Today at uh, number one, I'm I'm coming to the uh, fucking uh, execs' homes and uh, shooting them with a gun. <laughs> it's me, Carson Daly. That was I don't great. Know. That I, was great. Yeah. That Very was great. Wow. Yeah, give Thanks. him a hand. Give him a hand. I don't know. I was put on the spot. My back was up against the wall, and I folded. Look, your brand is non-commitment, and you pulled, <laughs> and you really deliver on it. <laughs> Right, your brand. If I if I had one word for your brand, mm -hmm. it's aloof. No, I don't know. I'd, exactly. You know. There you go. I don't know. There you go. Um. All right. <laughs> um, I got one here. Go ahead. Go. Uh, I uh, wanted to address something to uh, the motherfucker. Uh, 
I understand that you've uh, recently wished or mused that some of the actors who've chosen to go on <laughs> strike would lose their homes, uh, their houses and apartments. Uh, you motherfucker. You realize that you're only existing in this industry at the because of the work that these uh, poor people put in, and uh, it's time, I think, uh, <laughs> that we all storm your offices in Burbank at the Disney Studio, uh, right there on Riverside, not the Riverside that you're <laughs> thinking of, but the other Riverside. <laughs> And we yank you out of there like Mickey Mouse at the end of The Sorcerer's Apprentice after he's flooded the whole fucking joint. <laughs> and maybe you should lose your house, pal. <laughs> and maybe once in a while, maybe the mouse should be the one that gets taught a lesson. Woo! Who Thank was you. that? Thank you. That was... Um, that was um, Louis C.K. That right? was Louis C.K. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, who was it? Was it, yeah, was it Malkovich? That was oh, John Malkovich. Malkovich. You're always you're always really good at LA geography stuff. Well, I grew up here. It's yeah, up. yeah, yeah. The second Riverside is they, they were yeah, the river, Riverside, Riverside. Yeah, that's the you know <laughs> you time that the right way. The laughter gets you <laughs> get gets you all the way to uh, to uh, uh, Fletcher Drive. <laughs> yeah, I love Fletcher Drive. Wait, do that in the do that in the Kindler voice. <laughs> Do the what's Fletcher a, Drive. Hey, what's thing? wrong? You didn't like the the <laughs> material about the river, the riverside, riverside? Hmm? <laughs> what is it? What did you, which the frog? Is it alienating the frog town, hometown frog town audience <laughs> with the amphibian in neighborhood in the frog town? What's it? What, 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 you catch you on Fletcher. <laughs> Is, Wait, can is I? The new, is the new with the thing with the f Fletcher? Real, very quick aside, if I could. I, I did just remember years ago, maybe like 10 years ago, 11, 11 years ago, there was a college gig you did in Virginia, George Mason University. And this is like, there? wow, I was, yeah, I was there. I was living in Virginia at the time. And you let me do a set beforehand. All right. But I watched you, I watched you do a, a show to college, college kids, kids. And then you halfway through the set, pull out the Kindler. <laughs> and... <laughs> It's a bunch of students Virginia. that are like, I don't know who, look, I don't know what that look, is. Look, yeah, but But look, you, you were like, this is, you were like, I, I'm doing an Andy Kindler impression now. Look, uh, and, they, and this, it's a it good worked, impression. It worked at NACA. That's all <laughs> yeah. I can say. I went to NACA. They were like, we like it. Can you lean into the LA comedy <laughs> impressions? And so I was like, well, they're paying it. I'm going to do what they want. Do Kindler <laughs> threatening Bob Iger? Oh, yes, please. Yes. What's, what's, what, hey, we do. The, here's the, the latest hack. The, 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 the comment, the, the comment in Deadline. With everyone read the comment in Deadline. <laughs> which is, which, well, there's a, which, what's wrong? Which, should I do? When I do the Deadline, I, this is like well, now I'm one of this is now a, this form of material. Thank you, Nikki Fink. Am I wrong? Am I wrong with the Nicky Fink reference? That there was the guy in Deadline who said that, wait, why, you gonna lose their houses? You know, this is the kind of, what, what I was thinking about the, the, imagine it was earlier when the laughter was working and before there was the losing of the houses and the, am I, so the, the, suddenly I think that you people, suddenly I lose the track of the impression and the joke and now I'm the bad guy? <laughs> Uh, yeah. J Jerry Lewis, everybody. Jerry Lewis. <laughs> you have you have one, or you want me to give you one? Uh, uh, someone to you know. You want an old guy? I could do the. I could do Ed Wynn. Oh the yeah. Mad Hatter. Oh, this is brilliant. Oh yeah. Uh, you buckle up. <laughs> I hope you know who Ed Wynn was. The original guy. Mad Hatter. Uh, original Mad Hatter. You think you could with your forty-seven million dollars? You. <laughs> This is insane. <laughs> Look, Mr. Iger, we know who it is. Oh, we know. Oh, I yes, think Yes, about... indeed we know. Indeed we know. <laughs> yeah. And it's, I swear to God, you guys are out there working so hard, and it makes me so sad <laughs> to know that you're not getting paid and fucking... Bob Iger, I'm going to kill you and your whole family. That's right, we're going to kill you. I swear to God, I'm going to kill you and your family and your dogs. 
Four generations out. You know, it'll get to you. That's it. Off of his head. Nice. Off of his head. Nice. nice. Do you know Edwin's son? Oh, we could do. He, if it's. Uh, uh, what? He has a son? Come on. Nedwin? <laughs> no, he was a really uh, very popular actor. Steve too. Wynn. No, he owns. <laughs> he's a scumbag who owns casinos. Those are great glasses, by the way. Thanks. They're prescription. Ah, that makes him. I get my better. prescriptions filled at Santee Alley. More Los Angeles <laughs> shit for you guys. Santee Alley, huh? Santee Alley. That's where you get off-brand clothing. If you, hey, if you want to stick it to the Dis- uh, president of Disney, go buy a bunch of off-brand Disney yeah, stuff at yeah. Santee Alley. <laughs> all hey, for all, in all seriousness, I hate the Disney like fucking. Mickey's. Paraphernalia, man. You won't catch me dead yeah. in a fucking Mickey Mouse t-shirt. I'm gonna make sure mm-hmm. that you're buried in a Baloo the Bear costume. <laughs> I will make sure of it that you are. Then I'll haunt your ass. <laughs> no, I see adults walking around with fucking Mickey Mouse t-shirts. Mm-hmm. It's supposed to be ironic. You know. The hats. The, the hat. Yeah, the fucking yeah. mouse yeah. ears. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that shit's for babies. <laughs> That's, uh, yeah, I don't watch that stuff. The baby shows. Eddie, Eddie. I don't I watch think, baby shows. Eddie, you know how maybe you have sometimes you, there's the edge to your comedy that you have a hard time communicating to the, the wider population? <laughs> Maybe if you just came out with a nice, comforting Winnie the Pooh sweater. <laughs> with Eeyore. Like kind of Jim Gaffin- Gaffigan-esque. Get that audience is all I'm saying. Yeah, get Winnie that. The Poo, Winnie the Pooh, Christopher Robin. Winnie the Pooh. And then it's the corporations. <laughs> wait, what's the, wait, what was the Gaffigan-Winnie the Pooh connection? What about Gaffigan? You said Gaffigan-esque. Yeah, what about it? Wait, does he wear is there, Winnie he the thinks Pooh? thinks there's a leap no, from Winnie the just, Pooh. Just, he's just... I, suddenly, is it because I'm <laughs> fat? <laughs> is it because I'm fat? I know I love honey. <laughs> why? I, why did... Why when did I got poop? stuck in a hole, they fucked my ass. What if I did dirty material? <laughs> why are you doing that? Why is he wearing a Winnie the Pooh why sweatshirt? Why is he wearing a Winnie the Pooh sweatshirt? <laughs> Where are why his Why is pants? he committing to a bit that's <laughs> not working? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I want to hear Baloo the Bear talk to the president of Disney. I don't know who Baloo the fucking <laughs> from bear the jungle, jungle Book. From the Jungle, jungle Book. book. I don't Man know. Cub. Jungle book. Hey. I don't know. I never had children. Mm-hmm. I don't play and that I fuck. never was a child. <laughs> People don't know this. I sprung fully formed <laughs> out of the head. I, f- I was. I sprung <laughs> fully formed out of the head of Upton Sinclair. <laughs> And I was already 50 years old. <laughs> I came in this world at 50. I didn't go to kindergarten. I went to tapings of uh, Morton Downey Jr. <laughs> That's, That's my school. Wow. A round of applause if you know Morton Downey Jr. Wow. Yeah, just a few, just so, a few. That's a great line, though. I didn't go to school. I went to tapings of Morton Downey Jr. Maybe the funniest thing you ever fucking said in your life. Eddie... And it wasn't, and that's my problem. So eight people get it. I know that's the problem. The people, the people who can really get yeah. the references and the tent poles of your life are rapidly dying off. <laughs> Even the young are dying off now. <laughs> what do you think of climate breakdown, uh, Brandon? Like, do you think I hate it? <laughs> but uh, the, the the yeah. Wait, the the rapidly increasing climate change? Are you asking me uh, how do I feel about it? Mm, do you, I guess the yeah, you're right. You're right. That was a very broad question. <laughs> the, specifically, how much time do you think civilization has left before it becomes just fucking crazy chaos? In other words, there will be no Hulu. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? No, right. no DoorDash. It'll, yeah. It'll just be, you know, you're making... Surprisingly, money. Yelp will outlast <laughs> the human race. Well, you have to have... By the way, how come everybody I interact with wants to know how they did these major... Co- I got a fucking email from my anesthesiologist. I recently went through a procedure. I'm not okay. Anyway... <laughs> 
he got the anesthesiologist wants to know how he did. Well, the easy answer is I don't know. I, That's I right. Don't, yeah, yeah. I don't remember. That was kind of the punchline. Well, you didn't get to it fast enough. <laughs> I, my punchline is a little better. <laughs> Where I say, well, for the one to two second I was up, you were terrific. <laughs> anyway, that would have been better. I like it. So what do you what do you think? How much time? Because. Um, do you know? Do you guys know? And you guys know th- anything called an, uh, a term called feedback loop with the climate? Oh, well, I've heard the term feedback loop, but not with regards that to you're to- not visa not visa v the climate. Ooh. Sure. Yeah, I'm kind of a I'm kind of an autodidact. Wow. Yeah, I know visa v, dude. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> so you know what a cl- uh, the feedback the feedback loop. Is? loop is when uh, the uh, the system breaks down, and the breakdown of the system ex- causes yes. other systems to break down and ex- they accentuate okay. uh, For the negative instance, consequences. And I'll give you an example why we're completely fucked. Is the oceans warm, and they can't cool off because, you know, it the... Um, <laughs> Ozone? It doesn't matter. (laughs) The ozone stops, you know, the the heat. The heat's trapped. And so the ocean then gets hotter, and it just continues. So the oceans will continue to warm, and there's 90-degree temperatures now around Florida. Now, I don't think that's a bad thing. Um, Floridians should die. I mean... (laughs) If, if there's you, any way to bleach the state and not the coral. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, exactly. But have you so that's what a feedback loop is where you know it just gets worse and worse. Right. And it, it can't be uh saved, even though a lot of people are into <laughs> this magical thinking shit. Mm-hmm. And by the way, again, this lull is planned. That's right. <laughs> I was gonna say, speaking of worse and worse, uh We've got enough time to maybe do a, a one more segment. Okay, and which then one? Wrap do we... it up. Oh, wrap it up, huh? They got, which one do we want to do? Um, let's do Let's do me addressing SAG. Like I'll be a union leader addressing SAG, and and mm. you guys could be actors, you know, chiming in. Okay. All right. You you understand that one? Yeah. yeah. What yeah. Uh, now? Ourselves. I uh, yeah. What is a feedback loop? I'm kidding. Okay. Um, <laughs> There's some of these breakout right. rooms at SAG After have really weird meetings. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you introduced this. I'm uh, a union leader for SAG, and I'm addressing the troops about mm-hmm. the strike. All right. And now the union leader, Eddie Pepitone, addresses the union about the strike. It's too on the nose, your. <laughs> All right, here we go. <laughs> here we go. All right. Members, I want to say one goddamn thing. We are going to fucking eviscerate these motherfuckers. Now, tomorrow, I, I want you guys out on the picket line at 9 a.m., Now, I know it's going to be 120 degrees. (laughs) Now, I can't make it. Yeah, yeah, you have a question? Uh, Yeah, I usually get to Maru for my pajama coffee at about 9.30 on Hillhurst. So is there any way that we can, like, is there, like, a cap and trade where we can, like, switch spots with someone? That's a good question. Mary will answer that later. Now, this is what I want to say. And by the way, terrific shit, sir, about being very specific with regards to Los Feliz. (laughs) Hillhurst is a street that's so recognizable (laughs) to those little fucking hipsters prancing around getting eggs. I want to talk to you people about feedback loops. Nobody knows what it is. And it has nothing to do with our strike. That's it on that topic. (laughs) Sir, could you just hold the microphone a little bit further? Sorry. This is what we need to do. 
We, even though we hate the fucking writers usually, they are our buddies now. And I want you people to be out here 9 a.m., bring sunscreen, bring water, bring little packets of electrolytes, bring milk duds if they still make them. <laughs> Get nice, nice things for yourself. It's going to be a long haul because these people are rich scumbags. Rich scumbags. And the only reason I won't be here tomorrow is I am in the middle of the bear. <laughs> and it's getting pretty good because they're out of the restaurant more now where it makes me anxious and they're talking about Michael's suicide. <laughs> For those of you who haven't watched it, I just ruined part of it. <laughs> what is this shit? What is this shit? I come down to a union meeting and I see they've got my estranged brother up there trying to rally the actors and he's talking about specific shit like milk duds. Look, Freddie, that's my brother Freddie Peppertone who tries to undercut me at every labor meeting. Now, Freddie, the reason I mentioned Milk Duds is because in my childhood, it was a saving grace. I never liked the malty taste, and you're wrong about that. You are wrong about that. It's Kit Kats that kept our family together. <laughs> this is product placement. It's still okay to do commercials. I will not do them unless asked. Eddie, you've got the cadence of someone rallying people who are going on strike. But these people, hundreds of actors, were willing to rise up in a labor movement, have heard nothing of substance from anything you've said. I'm anything about a particular gate at Warner Brothers. <laughs> anything about what street to be dropped off at at Netflix. Check the gate, I say. Check the gate. That's a great reference to the film era of motion pictures. Do they not check gates anymore? They don't need to because it's digital, you fuck. <laughs> that explains a lot. <laughs> we all know you've been on the film set screaming, why didn't we check the gate? And they usher you back to your trailer with a chamomile tea. <laughs> I want to say this to you actors. We have to stick together. If you run out of food, I have a voucher. <laughs> At Chick-fil-A. <laughs> Problematic, Eddie. Why? Chick-fil-A, homophobic. Those chickens hate gays. <laughs> All right, sorry. Instead of Chick-fil-A, I also have a voucher to Jersey Mike's. <laughs> no problem there. <laughs> Great to see Danny DeVito shilling for another shit company. <laughs> He's, it's nice to see him finding a role he can play that's a little bit bigger than the subs he's endorsing. <laughs> Great hype joke. Now, what I want to say to you brave, brave people and look for my book coming out on acting called Lack of Work. Look for it. <laughs> That should have got a bigger laugh. How <laughs> audacious of you, Eddie, to bring up Danny DeVito when it instantly makes us all think we'd rather be here watching him do this than you. <laughs> Would you? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> let's stick together. Let's not, think, let's not let things like heat rashes or chafing of the thighs. I get a lot of that. When I pick it in heat, I use gold bond powder. <laughs> <laughs> I take steroids, and that's not for the chafing. That is for a brain thing. That's for your bodybuilding. Is that right, Eddie? I am in the gym recently. I got to say, I don't like it. Anyway, 
Let's really forge ahead. Let's watch each other's backs. Everybody, I want to tell you this, and this is a promise from me, your union leader. If we come through this strike, I will get everybody a small neck tattoo. <laughs> You're a regular hoffer, Eddie. <laughs> where, where do you think he is? I know where he is, Eddie. Where? He's underneath, he's underneath our house where we grew up. Okay. Mommy buried him. That's right. We have Hoffa. We shouldn't have said that in public. <laughs> anyway, I want to thank everybody for coming tonight. We're going to wrap up this show. I want to thank Brandon Wardell. Thank you. I want to thank, thank James. James. Sure. Kevin Tinkin. And Eddie Pepitone. Thank you guys for coming. Thank you so much. Good night, everybody. Thank you, Eddie.